Hello guys, today I want to talk about magic methods and magic constants inside PHP. Magic methods are heavily used in today's modern PHP frameworks and CMSs. Uh, I think this topic is a really interesting, powerful and the most magical part in PHP. So let's get ready, time for magic! PHP provides about 16 magical methods. Today we're gonna cover I think 10 or 11. Why is this topic so magical? All magic methods are executed automatically by the PHP engine itself. They aren't explicitly invoked. We have already talked about two magical methods, underscore underscore construct and underscore underscore destruct in one of my previous videos. If you haven't watched this video, you can find the link down in the description below. Okay, let's start with the third magical method, toString. ToString magic method is a really useful way to control how you want your object to be converted into string. Okay, what happens if I try to print right now the object, person, which is an object and I'm trying to echo as a string? Here is our um, fatal error. Object class person could not be converted to string. This is a really common error when you try to print uh, an object uh, as a string. So, toString method solves this problem. So, if you know the way how you want to print your object, you can basically create toString magic method and return the string whatever you want from this uh, method. And this string, toString method, will be used to convert the object into string when we are about to print the object as a string. In this case, I can, for example, write that the name of the person is this name and the phone of the person is this phone. And now let's run the code again. And now we, see, we don't see error anymore, but instead we see that name Jane, phone this, and destruct is called. Uh, of course, first construct is called, then we print the name, and then destruct is called. Let me remove this construct and destruct, and run it again. And here is our uh, result of toString magic method. Okay, the next magic methods I want to talk about is underscore underscore get and underscore underscore set. Okay, look at the following example. I have a person object and I am trying to output to echo an existing username pro uh, property from this object. What will happen? I will have an error. Undefined property person username. And that's pretty obvious. Uh, but what if I want my username property to be existing even though that I have not it declared in my properties array? For this, I can use magic method get. The magic method get is executed when we are trying to access an existing property of the object. In this case, we are trying to access a username and the username doesn't exist on the person uh, class, so magic method get will be executed. And the first argument is the property name, and in this case, the name argument will be username. So let's call it prop name. So this is a property name which we are trying to access to. So in this case, I can return uh, anything I wa want uh, when the username is accessed, or it will be better if I have some logic right here. If prop name is username, then I can return this name. So if we're trying to access username, I can give it, uh, give, I can return name. Otherwise, I can um, return some default string that the uh, property doesn't exist, uh, and the default string will be much more readable than this exception. So property something doesn't exist, and let's run the code, and now I see Jane. If I try to access some an existing property, yeah, like username one, then I will see a string property username one doesn't exist. Let me collapse this. Okay, let's talk about magic method set. Probably you have already some guesses, but let me tell you that uh, if the magic method get is executed when we are trying to access an existing property and return its value, magic method set is executed when we are trying to an existing property and, and assign something to it. 
Okay, let's create um, in an existing property, dynamical property like username and assign something to it like Mary. Okay, so in this case, username property is not declared inside the class and magic method uh, set will be executed. And we're gonna see the property names and values right here. So let me dump the property name and value. Run the code. And we see that the property name is username and the value is Mary. So inside this magic method set, I can control, I can put whatever logic I want and control how you, I want to treat the unexisting properties. I can throw an error. I can write an if statement uh, to check if the property is username, then I can say, uh, I can assign this value to the name. And when I run this and I print person's name, this will be updated names. This will be Mary. So this is how magic method set works. Okay, the next magic method I want to talk about is underscore underscore call. This magic method is executed when we are trying to execute an existing method of the object. So here we have a private phone and let me generate getter for this. Okay, here's my get phone method. And now I'm gonna call get phone, which will be absolutely absolutely valid method and this will give me a phone in my console. Okay, here's my phone. Okay, what happen, What will happen if I change my get phone method into get mobile phone? Of course, this will give me an error and the error will say that, where's the error? Ah, uh, yeah, we have this magic method call declared and that's why we don't have this error. Let me comment this and run the code and here is the error. Um, uncode error, call to undefined method person get mobile phone. That's why underscore underscore magic method call exists. If you want to handle the an existing method calls, the call magic method is the correct place. So here we have name and arguments and the arguments is array of all arguments passed to get mobile phone. In this case, arguments uh, will be empty array. So let's dump both method name and arguments. Here's get mobile phone and arguments is empty array. So here we can put whatever logic we want. I can check that if the method name is get, uh, what may, get mobile phone, then I can return, return whatever is returned from get phone. And now when I execute the code, it will print phone game. Because basically we are redirecting to the get phone method when get mobile phone executed. So we can do the same thing for uh, set phone, for example. Let's duplicate this change into set phone, which will accept an argument phone. And here I write that this phone is phone without return. Let me remove these dark blocks. Okay, and now let's try to execute the set mobile phone method. Set mobile phone. And let's put here one, 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 one. Okay, and again, print, let me duplicate the line, and again, print mobile phone. Okay, the, so this didn't work. And the reason is really simple because we have not catched this set mobile phone method inside magic method call. So I can write else if name is set mobile phone, I can call this set phone giving their arguments first. 
because we know that the first argument is the uh, mobile phone given to the set mobile phone method. Okay, this will work. But what will happen if uh, I don't know how many arguments actually I'm going to pass to the method? In this case, this is really simple, uh, simple case, and I'm passing just single argument. But here I have arguments array, which may contain 10 or 12 or even more arguments. So how can I pass all arguments in my set form? Using call user func array uh, function. The first argument is the callable. And the callable consists of two parts. First is the object and second is the method name. And in this case, I'm saying that I want to execute this object's set phone method passing all arguments there. And this will work in the same way as it was working before. And we see that it prints one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, 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 one. If I have uh, several private properties inside the class, uh, and I want to create getter methods for all of them, uh, I can use this magic method call to do the same thing. So instead of writing um, each method for each private property, I can put a logic here that if we are trying to access private property using get and the property name in uppercase first, like for example, if we are trying to access um, get phone and if the uh, get phone method doesn't exist, I can return the phone value from my magic method call. And this approach is heavily used in today's uh, PHP frameworks. It looks at your private properties and when you, uh, when you are calling a get phone or get my private property method, um, it handles this inside magic method call. Okay, the next method I want to talk about is call static. Call static method works in uh, the similar way, but it's for uh, static methods. Here I have declared public static function called static, which takes a uh, name and arguments. And this method will be executed when I'm trying to uh, call an existing static method on the class, not on the instance. Like person, hello. And right now I can return or echo something. Um, name method static method was called okay so run the code and here we see hello static method was called okay before i mention uh, the name of the next magic method i want to show the following example so let me delete this and what i do right here i am trying to use my object uh, as a function. You see what I'm doing? And I'm running the code and I have error again. Function name must be a string. Okay, basically I am trying to use my object as a function and trying to execute it. And that's not possible by default, but it can be done using magic method invoke. Okay, invoke and the magic method invoke is executed right here when we are trying to execute our object. Okay, let's run this code and here we see hello from invoke. And I can again do whatever I want right here. Return object was called as a function and this will be printed uh, on the line 16. Here it is. The invoke magic method can also accept arguments. So if I pass some argument right here, it will be accepted in the invoke and you can do, use the arguments. And we can use also uh, is callable method to check if we, call, if we can call the object or not. So if I uh, just print is callable and giving this person if the person is callable or not and I run the code I see that person is callable but if I remove this invoke method person is not callable anymore and I should see their up boolean false 
Okay, that's enough about invoke. And the next methods I want to talk is underscore underscore sleep and underscore underscore wake up. Okay, objects can be serialized and they can be converted into string, saved into database, and later they can be unserialized and converted back to objects. Serialize person and output the value. And here is my serialized person. It's this, uh, this string. And later I can unserialize and let's dump the new person. Okay, here's my new person. And as you can see, it has this number two, which means that basically we have created a second object. And the new person is not the same as the person. So they are different objects. Uh, of course, we if we compare with two, uh, two equality, they are the same, but with three equality, they are not the same. So they are not the same objects. Um, so what happens here is that serialized converts the object into string and unserialized converts it into object, but this object is new object. Magic method sleep is executed before the serialized function uh, does its job. So when we call serialize, it checks if we have the magic uh, method uh, sleep registered on the object. And if it exists uh, prior to serialization, this magic method is called. And we should return the array of properties we want to include in the serialization. And additionally, we can do some cleanup uh, work in our uh, sleep method before serialization. Let's say that I don't want my phone to be included in the serialization process. So I'm gonna uh, actually unset my phone property from the serialization and I should return the array of properties I want to include in the serialization. And in this case, I'm gonna return a name, but I shouldn't have the uh, phone and name right here declared. Instead, I'm gonna accept them in the, in the constructor. So let me remove this and auto-generate constructor. Okay, and when I create new person, I give Jane and one, two, three, four, five, six, right there. And right now, before um, serialization, sleep will be called. It will unset the phone and return the name. And then the serialization process will not include phone. And here is my new person, and it doesn't have this phone anymore. Magic method wake up is called after unserialize is called. So if you have a connection to the database, for example, in your um, in your database class, and uh, you probably need to unset your connection resource and clean up your resources in your sleep method, and then reconnect in, in the wake up method. Here we know that um, the wake up is called after serialization and I can do some action right here. So I am wake upping or waking up. Uh, typo. Okay, let's run the code and we see I am waking up. So when this line was called the um, serialized object um, was unserialized and wake up method was called and after then the person is printed. So that's basically a new way of creating an object. So if we want to clone existing object, uh, we can serialize into string and then unserialized without sleep and wake up methods. Okay, so and the next magic method I want to talk is underscore underscore clone. So let me clean up the code and do the following. Okay, let's leave the constructor. And now I'm about to clone my uh, object. New person is uh, clone the person. And this will, of course, give me a new person object. Um, magic method clone is executed uh, after the cloning is done. And this is executed on the new object, on the new person. So I'm gonna declare 
clone magic method. And we can we can see that let me dump this this and we can see that it has number two. So our person object is number one. Uh, here is here's our person object which is the number one object and then uh, we see this number two object and this proves that the clone method is executed on the just cloned object okay let's imagine the case that I want to keep track how many instances are created from this person class and one way is to create a static property counter which will uh, be increased in the constructor. And this will keep track how many instances are created using new and the class name. But this, is, this will not give us security information because right now we have created new object from existing person object, P object, and this did not call constructor. So uh, in this case, uh, we have two objects created from the person class, but our static counter will only include one. So let me, let's do this. Static counter is zero, and in the constructor, we increase the counter. And I'm gonna do the same thing in the clone. So when we are cloning object, I'm gonna increase the counter, so I need to keep track also the objects which are cloned. So, and after this, I'm gonna print my person counter, which should give me two. And here it is. So I have basically two objects created from the person class, one using new keyword and one using cloning. And another way of a cloning object is to serialize and unserialize it, okay? When the object is unserialized, new object is created. So I can create um, another magic method, wake up, and put my um, self counter plus plus right here also. So whenever object is unserialized, we can increase the value. So here I create new person two, which is unserialized of serialize of person. Um, and let's dump all objects, person, person, new person, and new person two. And we can see that uh, they are different objects. This is number one, this is two, and this is three. And inside our counter, we have three. And this concludes our video. We have seen about um, 10 or 11 magic methods, discussed it, and probably it was understandable for you. Um, let me know what you think in your comments. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like and, and subscribe buttons and share this video to your friends or to your social media. And thanks again and see you in the next time.